بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم مساء الخير يا شباب ازيكم اخباركم ايه آه النهارده مع بعض ان شاء الله دي اخر محاضره في آه الكورس بتاعنا اناليتيكال كيمستري 3 محاضره النهارده حاجه صغيره كده وبسيطه آه هي بتدخل من ضمن الفود اناليسيز والنهارده هنتكلم تحديدا على آه الملك احنا اخدنا مع بعض الميلك اناليسيز واخدنا بعد كده اخدنا اسفه مع دكتور مروه الووتر اناليسيز وبعدين اخدنا مع بعض الليبيد اناليسيز ودي طبعا من ضمن الحاجات الايدبل او اللي بتستخدم في المستحضرات الغذائيه والمستحضرات الطبيه النهارده ان شاء الله هنكمل وهناخد الميلك اناليسيز لان برضو من الحاجات المهمه اللي يبقى عندنا معرفه كويسه بيها Uh, let's start with the nature of milk and the composition of milk. What is milk? Milk, as you all know, is the normal mammary gland secretion of female mammals after birth of uh, children or of babies. Uh, the composition of milk, it's composed of uh, mainly of water. More than 80% of its composition is pure water, uh, together with uh, a small percentage of fat and then non-fatty solids. Uh, non-fatty solids include uh, calcium casinate, that's the calcium salt of the protein casein, uh, riboflavin, carotene, and xanthophyll. Um, being water or aqueous in nature, the freezing point of milk ranges from uh, zero degree centigrade, that's uh, because of the presence of water, the water content uh, freezes or solidifies at zero degree centigrade, while the uh, the solid content of milk freezes at uh, a point uh, uh, 0 0.5 degrees below zero, which is minus 0 0.5 degrees centigrade. Um, a brief. Uh, summary about the types of milk um, that's only for um, only for your knowledge just for information you will not be asked in your exam about the types of milk okay we are we are just giving you a, a brief idea about the types of milk so you are aware about this info uh, let's start with the standardized milk that's the pure milk as brought from the uh, buffalo or the cow milk. It contains 4.5% uh, fat and the non-fat solids are about 8.5%. There is whole milk or whole fat milk that's 3.25% fat and 8.25% non-fat solids. Here are the uh, fatty content is reduced in milk and therefore the uh, calories produced by whole milk is less than that produced by standardized milk. Uh, the third type is the reduced fat milk. Um, this type of milk contains only 2% of fats. Uh, then we come to the low fat milk that contains only 1% of fat. There is a reduction of 23% calories uh, from the original uh, standardized uh, milk. Um, then the skimmed milk, the non-fatty milk, um, it contains 0.5% uh, milk fat and 5% uh, uh, of uh, its calories are from fat uh, or the from the fatty material uh, contained in the milk. Uh, skimmed milk has about half percent of the calories of the whole milk. So skimmed milk produces 50% only of the calories produced by the whole milk. And uh, that's why skimmed milk is used by those uh, uh, on diet or, or low fat diet uh, or requiring to reduce their weights. Um, pasteurized milk, that's milk that has undergone a process of pasteurization. A process of pasteurization. It's a process to kill bacteria uh, by heating milk for 30 minutes at 63 degrees centigrade, then 
raise the temperature of heating to 72 degrees centigrade for only 15 seconds and then uh, cooling down the, uh, uh, the solution. Pasteurized milk can be kept fresh uh, in a fridge for two to three days. Its expiry, if kept in a fridge, is two to three days. What about unpasteurized milk or raw milk or untreated milk? Milk as secreted from the animal, okay? Uh, uh, that does not undergo a process or hasn't gone yet a process of pasteurization. Uh, of course, it's recommended that babies, young children, elderly people, pregnant women, uh, anyone with impaired immune system to avoid drinking unpasteurized milk. Uh, of course, for uh, avoiding any infection with any uh, contained bacteria or viruses. دي كده أنواع الملك اللي ممكن تلاقوها موجودة في في الماركت أي علبة ملك موجودة في الماركت أي شركة بتنتجها هتلاقي عليها اسم أو ترم من الترمز اللي احنا قلناهم دولت whole milk, low fat milk, skimmed milk, pasteurized milk والunpasteurized أو الuntreated أو الرو ملك ده طبعا الملك اللي هو بيتباع الحليب اللي بيتباع يعني سايب في بعض المحلات واللي المفروض ان احنا يعني نتفادى ان احنا نتعامل بيه والاحسن طبعا ان احنا نتعامل مع الباستورايزد ميلك لانه بيكون اتخلص من البكتيريا اللي موجودة فيه uh, Let's contain with the terms we have the long life milk that's pasteurized and homogenized with its fats so no fat removed from the long life milk so it can be kept at high temperature to destroy bacteria and its expiry is increased until one week not only two to three days like the pasteurized one no this is a long life milk it can remain fresh for up to one week uh, of course i'm saying one week without preservatives all these expiry dates uh, are um, the the times or the periods that milk can remain fresh without the use of preservatives okay then there is the ultra heat treatment milk or the ultra heat treated milk or the UHT milk that's heated to a very high temperature um, 132 degrees centigrade that's equivalent to 270 degrees Fahrenheit this can be stored up to three months up to three months uh, some milks contain the dried milk that's the powdered form of the milk spray dried milk it's liquid milk and water is evaporated and it's converted into the powdered form uh, evaporated milk that's homogenized milk with reduced water content it has undergone heating and evaporating some of its water content so it's called evaporated milk it's a little bit uh, concentrated milk so it can be said that is concentrated milk okay then the condensed milk it's also evaporated and sugar has been added to thicken and sweeten so it's added and used for desserts and sweets okay all these types are the types of milk that can be available in the market you can find in the supermarket or in the hypermarket any milk container you use will have one of these terms on its pack uh, you have long life milk you have um, um, a skimmed milk you have low fat milk you have whole fat milk uh, there is also evaporated and condensed milk in little cans all these uh, terms are uh, available in the market uh, يبقى زي ما قلنا كل الترمز ديت كل الانواع دي هنلاقيها موجوده في السوبر ماركت او في الهايبر ماركت كل اي عبوه ميلك لازم هيبقى مكتوب عليها ترم من دولت uh, ومن ضمنهم كمان الايفابوريتد والكوندنسد دي بتبقى عبوات uh, معدن صغيره كان صغير بيبقى مكتوب عليها انها ايفابوريتد ميلك او كوندنسد ميلك uh, للاستخدامات المختلفه بقى يعني غالبا الايفابوريتد دوت بيكون لل المشروبات السخنه زي الشاي بلبن والنسكافيه وما الى ذلك الكوندنسد ميلك دوت اللي هو بيبقى مكتوب عليه حليب مكثف محلى سويتند اند ثيكند اند كوندنسد بيستخدم في الحلويات في السويتس والفودز وما الى ذلك 
طبعا يا شباب انواع الملك اللي فاتت ديت مش هتبقى موضع سؤال في الامتحان احنا بس لازم طبعا نعرفها واحنا بنتكلم على التايبس اوف ميلك وطبعا الاكسبيري ديتس اللي احنا قلناها في السلايد اللي فاتت انه عبوه ممكن تقعد لاسبوع او لثلاث ايام ده في عدم وجود البريزرفاتيفز لان اغلب الملك كونتينرز اللي هتلاقوها موجوده في الماركت هتلاقوا الاكسبيري بتاعها اطول من الاوقات اللي احنا قلناها دي بكتير لانه بيبقى عليه بريزرفاتيف انما احنا شفنا انه حتى يعني اقصى تريتمنت ممكن نوصل بيها هي الالترا تريتمنت ودي الاكسبيري هتوصل لثلاث شهور ودي مش كل الانواع طبعا بتبقى متاح انها يتعمل لها التريتمنت ديت Let's talk about the analysis of milk how to analyze milk concerning its chemical and physical properties First we determine the specific gravity of milk by uh, a small apparatus called the lactometer like the one in the picture the regular uh, specific gravity of milk ranges from 1.05 to 1.035 at the room temperature, 25 degrees centigrade. This is for fresh milk. After 20, uh, after 12 hours of milking, uh, the specific gravity uh, changes to 0.0013. Okay, of course, you are not requested to memorize the numbers. You just know that the specific gravity is measured by a lactometer. Measuring the pH can be done by a pH meter, a regular pH meter, not one specific for milk. And the uh, standard pH of milk is around 6.6. That's in the acidic side. This is weakly acidic because of the presence of the lactic acid. Lactic acid gives milk its weak acidity. Uh, what about determination determination of the total solids, the total amount of solids present in a milk sample? This can be easily determined by using a crucible. A crucible is like a porcelain dish, okay, a small porcelain dish. You first start by weighing this crucible. Weigh it when it's empty. Take the weight, then add five grams of milk in the crucible and take the overall weight put the crucible in a water bath until dryness all the liquid evaporates and a solid material remains then after this complete dryness take the crucible and put in a hot oven for some time then remove from the oven and cool and after cooling take the final weight after weighing now you can determine the percent of total solids by this equation the equation says that you subtract the weight of the empty crucible subtracted from the total weight of the crucible and the sample after drying divided by the weight of the sample the weight of the milk sample itself and the resulting value value is multiplied by 100 Okay, so by this simple procedure and this simple equation, you can determine the percentage of total solids present in a milk sample. There is another uh, uh, method for calculating the total solid. That's Richmond's formula for total solid. Richmond's formula for total solid is an equation that says that T, the total solid percent, is equal to 0.25 D, and D is the density, one, uh, uh, plus 1.22 F, F is the percentage fat in the milk sample, plus 0.72. The regular cow milk has a total solid value of 0.66. About the chemical properties of milk, we can determine the chloride content by a very simple method. The method for determination of chloride content is based on taking a sample of 10 milliliters of milk to be diluted with 40 milliliters of water. And then add 10 drops of potassium chromate. Here it acts as the indicator. 
and then start titration with 0.1 normal silver nitrate. Okay? The end point is the formation of a prick red perceptate due to the uh, formation of silver chromate perceptate at the end point. Another value to be determined for milk is the titrable acidity, the free acids present in milk. This can be determined by a simple acid-based titration, 10 milliliters sample of milk, adding the indicator, that's phenylphthalein, and then titrated against standard 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide. A regular acid-based titration, simple acid-based titration using phenylphthalein as indicator. Of course, we are determining the lactic acid content, the free lactic acid content of milk. What about determination of the fat present in milk? The present fat can be determined by two methods. Method number one is Gerber's method. Gerber's method, method is based on reacting milk with um, uh, sulfuric acid and isoamyl alcohol. That's an immiscible alcohol with water or with milk, of course, because milk is aqueous in nature. Um, this reaction allows the dissolution of protein and release of fat. So we get rid of proteins by dissolving them and fat remains. Then the sample are centrifuged in a, a, a centrifuge and the fat remains solid and rises into the calibrated part of the used tube. The amount of fat remaining in the tube is taken and weighed to calculate the percentage fat content of milk. So Gerber's method is based upon the use of sulfuric acid and isoamyl alcohol for the solution of protein and centrifusion of the mixture. So um, uh, the fats remain uh, and uh, it remains in the upper part, in the calibrated part of the tube. It can be removed, then weighed to determine the percentage of the fat present in the milk sample. Another, another method for determination of the fat content of milk is the Werner-Schmidt method. Werner-Schmidt method or the acid digestion method. It's called the acid digestion method because it's based on digesting the present proteins in milk by the use of concentrated hydrochloric acid. After digesting the protein, fats are extracted with a mixture of alcohol, ethyl ether, and petroleum ether. Then heating to evaporate the ethers, the fat remains as a solid residue and to be weighed and used to calculate the fat content or the fat percent. This is another easy method for determination of the fat content of milk sample, the Werner-Schmidt method or the acid digestion method. It's called acid digestion because we are using concentrated acid to digest the proteins available in the uh, milk sample and only fats remain to be calculated. An important chemical reaction to be uh, studied is the detection of adulterant that are chemical uh, substances that's used to adulterate milk samples. How to adulterate milk. Some milk samples are adulterated by adding cane sugar. بيضيفولها سكر عشان يحلي طعم الملك بنسبة أكتر من ال 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 السويتنس العادية بتاعته عشان يبقى محبوب خصوصا في الألبان اللي بتستخدم للأطفال ودي طبعا بتبقى مشكلة كبيرة لأن وجود ال ال السكر بنسبة زيادة في الملك وخصوصا في ألبان الأطفال أولا بيعود الطفل على إنه يستهلكه بكميات كبيرة ويفضله عن مثلا لبن الأم لو هو طفل لسه في مرحلة الرضاعة المشكلة الثانية إنه طبعا سكر كتير في اللبن يعني كالوريز كتير يعني هيسبب زيادة وزن مش محسوبة في الكالوريز اللي مكتوبة على العلبة علب الملك بيبقى مكتوب عليها percentage calories بكل 1 جرام أو كل 
الكونتينر كله على بعضه بيدي كذا كالوري فالواحد بيحسب على اساسه الكونتنت اللي هو بياخده في الفود بتاعه او في الدايت بتاعه لما يبقى في ادلترنت زي الشوجر مش مذكور في الكونتنتس اللي موجود على على الباتل او على الكونتينر يبقى ده ادلتريشن ده غش تجاري ولازم تو بي ديتكتد We are talking about the adulteration of milk. Milk is usually adulterated by the addition of cane sugar, regular sugar, to increase uh, the sweetness or the sweet taste of, uh, of natural milk. Uh, this is a major problem because, uh, number one, increasing the sweet taste of milk um, will uh, make children prefer it over the uh, natural other milks or even the... mother's milk if it's uh, um, a nursing mother or it's uh, still an infant that's breastfeeding uh, the child um, uh, and of course it also increases the calorie content produced by the uh, milk container other than the values uh, mentioned on the label or uh, the bottle how to detect the presence of cane sugar in milk they we can use the modified uh, Sylvanoff method. The modified Sylvanoff method, uh, it's based on the chemical reaction between fructose that's present in the cane sugar with uh, resorcinol in the presence of hydrochloric acid to produce a red color. This is the major reaction. How to perform the reaction? The milk sample is allowed to be mixed with concentrated hydrochloric acid and stand for 10 minutes. Then we perform a filtration process. After filtration of the milk serum, it would be a clear uh, milk sealer, serum. We add the reagent, that's the modified resorcinol hydrochloric reagent, five milliliters, then allowed to be heated in a water bath for one minute. The tube develops A red color if it is adulterated with cane sugar due to the presence of fructose. Uh, natural milk does not contain fructose, so if it gives a red color, it means it is adulterated. Natural milk, milk should not produce a red color together with this reaction. Also, the presence of preservatives. Some uh, natural milk uh, sellers uh, add formaldehyde as a preservative to milk. Uh, why formaldehyde? Because it's effective and it's cheap. But the major problem with formaldehyde is it's not a certified preservative. It's forbidden from the use as uh, edible preservative. It's not safe for edible use. So we must determine the presence of uh, formaldehyde in water samples by Henner's test that detects the presence of formaldehyde. We use two milliliters milk in a test tube and add slowly a small amount of uh, concentrated sulfuric acid together with ferric chloride. Uh, of course, concentrated uh, sulfuric acid will form uh, a smaller uh, layer because it's heavier than the regular milk. Uh, adding the ferric chloride will result in producing a purple color ring at the junction. The junction between the two uh, phases, the milk phase and the sulfuric acid phase, uh, the, will produce a purple ring color. This indicates the positive presence of formaldehyde. يبقى هينرز تيست بنعمله يا شباب تو ديتكت البريزنس اوف فورمالدهايد مين بيضيف الفورمالدهايد للملك يا جماعه التجار اللي بيبيعوا اللبن السايب عشان يزودوا الفتره اللي هو يفضل فيها عندهم لو ما اتباعش وهو فريش طب مشكله الفورمالدهايد ايه مشكلته ان هو مش مصرح بيه كبريزرفيتيف للمواد الغذائيه وضار جدا وتوكسيك لو اتاخد بكميات كبيره فهو المفروض ان هو اصلا ما يتاخدش اورالي باي شكل من الاشكال فبنستخدم هينرز تيست تو ديتيرمين ذا بريزنس اوف فورمالدهايد ان اني ميلك سامبل ماي دير ستودنتس اي بين سو جلاد ذات وي هاف باسد ذس سيمستر توجذر اي نو اتس بين ا ليتل بيت هارد تو يو اوف كورس اونلاين كورسز ار نوت اور فيفوريت اي هوبد Uh, we could meet uh, face to face in our lectures 
but um, the most important thing is that you all have passed the semester uh, sound and safe and in good health. Um, I hope you uh, pass the semester with uh, very good grades as well. Uh, please study hard. Please uh, spend some time studying analytical chemistry 3. It's uh, a little course with uh, a lot of important information that will help you in your career. Um, I will announce about a time for uh, a live meeting uh, together uh, next week through Teams uh, application. So uh, we can uh, discuss anything about the course, uh, prepare your questions uh, so we can discuss it together and answer them uh, in our live meeting next week, inshallah. كل سنة وانتم طيبين وان شاء الله يعني تبقى نهاية ترم سعيدة عليكم أرجو أن أنا أكون ما أصرتش معاكم في الشرح وأن يكون الترم عدى علينا على خير جميعا من فضلكم يعني ذاكروا الكورس كويس وأنا في انتظار أسئلتكم أي حاجة مش فهمينها أنا موجودة وبرد على التيمز حتى لو تأخرت شوية في الرد أعذروني لكن أكيد حرد إن شاء الله معاكم لغاية يوم الامتحان وإن شاء الله حيبقى في لايف ميتنج الأسبوع الجاي على التيم نجاوب على أي أسئلة أنتم محتاجينها ونتكلم على الكورس بتاعنا لو في أي حاجة غمضة عليكم شكرا ليكم وكل سنة وانتم طيبين